Good morning, Canon users. Welcome back to our YouTube brand channel where we do technical analyses of hemp and cannabis stocks. This week we're looking at a cannabis stock, uh, one you're probably aware of given their recent press releases on our site. Um, but we're looking at Delta 9 Cannabis. Uh, this is obviously a cannabis company vertically integrated. Uh, they recently reported some of their highest revenue per quarter that they have. Uh, so pretty interesting. The, the ticker is N-I-N-E, 9, uh, and it trades uh, in Toronto on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, their main grow facility is up in Canada as well. This is a Canadian company. Um, but let's take a look at the pricing chart and see the interesting patterns emerging. So you can see NINE, we're looking at the Toronto Stock Exchange, and we're, I have a couple different indicators up. The first one you'll see, Bollinger Bands. We've seen these many times, they're super powerful. We're also looking at the Arun Oscillator. Uh, sometimes we look at the Arun up and down, now we're looking at the Arun Oscillator. You'll see it's at zero, so this is a, a trend uh, indicator. Anything above zero, uh, is this oscillator is telling us that it's bullish and pricing should go up. Anywhere below, bearish, and pricing should go down. Uh, so we'll interpret that with these Bollinger Bands, but uh, below that we have the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, and we've seen these many times. So just oversold or overbought, uh, a pretty clear 70-30 band here in the purple that we're looking at. So there's been a lot of pricing movement in Delta 9, which means a lot of uh, opportunity to take profit. Uh, so let's just focus on some more recent uh, periods, end of 2018, where we see this big downward trend. Then we'll talk about this upward trend when we're done. Uh, it started, and you can see the, the mean here in the Bollinger Band is in red. Our standard deviations, high and low, are in blue. And so you can see when there's high uh, price movement, we have wide Bollinger Bands. When there's low price movement, we have tight, uh, a neck right here. Uh, but after this neck, look what happens. We drop and we have uh, the pricing chart bounce once off of that standard deviation, twice, three times, four times. And so we know that once price gets to that standard deviation, it's just math, right? The Bollinger, it wants to come back up to the mean. It's the mean for a reason, right? It's because it spends the most amount of time there. That's the average. So pricing wants to come back up with the Bollinger band. Uh, but do we enter the trade here? Would we buy that and anticipate that move? Would we buy here where we would have lost? Would we buy here where we would have lost? Or would we buy here where we would have gained really big? Well, let's use our indicators to help us analyze this. So the Arun Oscillator, again, above zero, uh, is actually telling us that it's a, a position to buy. So what happens on this first one? Slightly negative. So it's actually saying there's still a weak downtrend here. So the Arun is telling us not to buy here. What about here? It's strongly down here. It's, it's really negative, negative 90. That's almost, you know, the scale is to negative 100. So strong downward trend here. We wouldn't predict then the price to come back up to the mean. What about here? Also strong. What about here? Also strongly negative, uh, but it crosses afterwards. So let, let's see what happens had we, you know, the, the change on zero is right here, we would have missed that move. So although it's telling us a couple of candles later uh, that the, the strength of the trend is changing and it, it changes to bullish, we would have entered right there and been able to capture about 128 to about 141, about 11 cents, which is a nice gain, but we would have missed a lot of this move. Let's see what happens if we combine that with the RSI, the relative strength index. This first bounce, not overbought or oversold, actually moving a little slightly downward. Uh, this second bounce, also not overbought, also not oversold, but approaching oversold territory. Look at this third bounce, it's now oversold. So that is actually saying, well, maybe we can predict a, a little increase in price. And look what happened, a little increase in price. But the Arun, again, is telling us it's strong negative trend. So maybe we were scared away from that, looking at the RSI. What about this fourth one? Super, super strong uh, in the oversold. Uh, that combined with what we see coming up in the Arun and the huge slope change in the relative strength index, that probably would have been enough to tell us, all right, let's, let's predict a little price increase here. 
Uh, and had we done that, we would have then gained that whole run. Uh, and, and so I want everyone to look at this chart on their own and see what they would have done through this period. It's kind of the exact same that we just went through, except for it's a bullish pattern now, until we get to oversold here, which then precipitates the big downward move. Uh, so a little hard to interpret through this horizontal period, especially right here. Uh, but take a look at this bounce uh, and, and look at these two indicators. Pretty clear what we would have done. Uh, so that's how you use multiple indicators to predict little micro changes in the pricing chart. You could just look at one chart, two charts, three companies, however many you need, and do the same analyses and just wait for those periods when everything lines up and we take our profit. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment period. Uh, and happy trading, everybody.